There are many different risks in Bitcoin, but one of the most dangerous ones is your lack of understanding of what Bitcoin is, how it works from a fundamental point of view. The higher your education, the lower the risk. Your investment in Bitcoin should be directly proportional to your understanding of what Bitcoin is, what it represents, how it works fundamentally, but also on a macro perspective, the news, the, the, the macro factors that could affect the current state of the market. It's a full analysis. A lot of people are communicating fear and uncertainty, and that is a reflection of your lack of understanding. In this channel, ladies and gentlemen, in Tech with Catalina, we're going to, in the whole 2021, continue providing education for the people who have been in the space and need to get uh, educated uh, in another level and the new people as well. So welcome everyone in this video. We're going to have an educational class that I'm sure is going to bring you a lot of value. Happy New Year, happy 2021. I hope you have a lot of new energies because it's going to be an intense year. I'm talking about risk. There are many different risks in Bitcoin that not a lot of people talks about. There are many different risks uh, and vulnerabilities that the system has or could have. A lot of attacks and vulnerabilities that the system has had in the past. A lot of different aspects of centralization that the system and Bitcoin has that we are going to also analyze in this channel. So welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about what happened January 3rd in 2009, okay? Uh, what happened here, Satoshi mined the Genesis block, the block zero of the block of chain, of the Bitcoin's blockchain. What happened? We're going to also analyze when the first transaction in Bitcoin occurred. It occurred between Satoshi Nakamoto and Hal Finney. Hal Finney was the first person to run the Bitcoin software after Satoshi Nakamoto. Nakamoto and because of here, to honor uh, Hal Finney, Finney, we named our Bitcoin full node here, uh, Hal, okay, so Hal and myself, we wish you a very happy new year, a very happy new year, and uh, I hope you're ready, I hope you're ready. So today we have a, an educational class, I hope uh, you have something to take notes, because I'm sure you will uh, learn many different things that you have not learned before. So let's go here to what I have just prepared for you all, and let's analyze what happened the 3rd of January in 2009, because a lot of people are saying happy birthday to Bitcoin. For me, the birthday of Bitcoin is the 31st of October, because Satoshi Nakamoto published the Bitcoin white paper the 31st of October 2008, and the 3rd of January 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto mined the Genesis block, the block zero in the Bitcoin's blockchain. And approximately it took him six days to do so. He mined it with his own computer. And in this video right now, I'm going to explain to you a couple, couple of characteristics that this block has and what happened after. So the Genesis block is a block zero. So it doesn't have previous blocks. It doesn't have previous transactions that they needed to be confirmed. So what well, the first characteristic of the Genesis block is that it has only one transaction, and that is the Coinbase transaction. What is the Coinbase transaction? It's the first transaction that happens in a block. It has no inputs, and actually it's a transaction that the miner, miners put, they put it in a block that they are uh, building, in a candidate block. And in that transaction, that transaction is like a paycheck that the miners are going to pay themselves uh, if they are able to mine the block, confirm the transactions, and extend the block of chain. In that transaction, in the Coinbase transaction, usually nowadays you can find the two economical incentives that the miners have, which are the block reward currently at 6.25 Bitcoin and all the fees of all the transactions included in that block, okay? But in this particular block, in the Genesis block, in the block zero, we didn't have any transactions here. So we didn't have fees. Okay, so, and at that time, it was 50 Bitcoin. So in this transaction, Satoshi introduced the first 50 Bitcoin to the system. And because of how it is uh, in the protocol, those 50 Bitcoins cannot be spent, all right? Why? Because Satoshi, we don't know if Satoshi did it on purpose or not, but those 50 Bitcoins cannot be spent because one of the 
best things that Satoshi did was to disappear. We don't know who Satoshi is, if it is a person or a group of people. The best thing uh, that they did or he did was to disappear because that contributed to the decentralization of the system. And another thing that he might have done by purpose is that no one can spend those 50 bitcoins because we know that uh, the bitcoins blockchain is traceable and we can verify everything. So we, if he spends those 50 bitcoins, we're going to start making conclusions uh, and communicate who Satoshi might be, and that may uh, make the system and decentralization of the system a little bit vulnerable, okay? Another thing that I wanted to highlight is that the miners in the Coinbase transaction, they can put a message. Nowadays, they can put the information that they want. And Satoshi put here in the Coinbase transaction a message that you, or I am sure you all know what it is, but it's uh, a message, it is the cover of the times, which is a newspaper at that precise moment, at that precise time, and that reflects with the message, Satoshi's reflection, reflecting the need to have a decentralized system for the transfer of value without the need of a central centralized entity. That is the message that Satoshi put in the Coinbase transaction in the Genesis block in January 3rd, on January 3rd, 2009, okay? In a second, in a couple of minutes, we're going to analyze the Genesis block in the blockchain itself. And I'm going to explain to you a couple of uh, concepts that you need to understand when analyzing a block as well. So what happened after this? It wasn't until the block 75 that the first transaction was made, was made between, as I said before, Satoshi Nakamoto and Halfine. Halfine was the first person after Satoshi to run the Bitcoin software. That is the reason why we have here HAL. I named my own full Bitcoin full note HAL for this reason. And the first transaction, so HAL started to run the Bitcoin software on January 11th. The, on January 12th was the first Bitcoin transaction between them both. And they, they uh, confirmed that the system worked. And this is when it all started. They confirmed and they started with this new revolution, the revolution of Bitcoin, okay? That you already know what it, what it represents for humanity in many different ways, okay? And one other factor that I'm sure you don't know uh, in, in nowadays, I am sure, is that it wasn't until one year later that the Genesis block was, uh, from the Genesis block was mined, it wasn't until one year later that uh, it was added in the in the Bitcoin's protocol that the Coinbase transaction can be spent after 100 blocks. So, for example, I told you before that the Coinbase transactions transaction includes the two rewards that the miners get if they are able to mine the block, confirm the, confirm all the transactions, and extend the block of chain. They can spend that Coinbase transaction 100 blocks after that precise block and this is something that was added in the bitcoins protocol one year after the genesis block was mined okay let's uh remember that bitcoin is technology that is constantly evolving bitcoin was not decentralized from one day to another bitcoin is open to innovation and participation and a lot of developers and engineers they contributed to the system and they keep on doing so so it's constantly evolving, it needs to scale and it needs to continue evolving so that it has not uh, vulnerabilities in terms of cryptography and many other different factors that we're going to continue analyzing in this channel as well. So here I wanted to show you that this is the block zero in the blockchain itself, okay? And there are two ways of identifying a block. One is the hash. We study what a hash is, remember? A hash is a summary, is a digital print of um, digital information. And in Bitcoin, we use hashes for different things, transactions and blocks, for example. And in order to make a hash, we need a hash function and an algorithm. The algorithm that we use the most in Bitcoin is the SHA-256, for example, okay? And the hash is the unique name and digital print of something. Um, uh, of a block, for example, and that is what allows us also to mathematically and cryptographically connect the block of chain, okay? Because the process of mining requires of making a double hash of the header of the block, so the identity of this block, for example, is going to include the hash of the previous block and so on in the, in the Bitcoin's blockchain. So, 
getting back here in the blockchain, block zero, Genesis block that Satoshi himself mined. There are two ways of identifying a block, as I said before, the hash. And the hash also, something that we studied in uh, our previous video, is that always starts with the number of zeros. This number of zeros, they represent the difficulty in the uh, for, for, for mining, okay? The more zeros we have here, the more difficult it is to mine and the difficulty it is adjusted every 2016 blocks, on average every two weeks, okay? So the more zeros we have here at the beginning, the harder it is to mine and we know also that the process of mining requires of solving a piece, a mathematical problem, finding a piece of information that is called the nonce, another piece of information that we have here in the header of the block. This is the header of the Genesis block, okay? The nonce, this is what the miners need to find. And in order to do so, they that that process is based on probability. So if we have more mining, miners trying to find a piece of information, they are going to do it faster. So the difficulty needs to be adjusted and vice versa. If we have a lot of miners leaving the system, it also needs to be adjusted. Okay, so let's keep on analyzing what we have here in the header of the Genesis block. We have the hash, we have the number of confirmations after this block, which means all the blocks that have been added after this one in the blockchain, in the Bitcoin's blockchain, the time, the exact time that this block was also mined, we have the height. The height is the other way of identifying a block. It is the height of the block in the blockchain, in the Bitcoin's blockchain. Here we have the miner, he says I know, but we know that it was Satoshi Nakamoto. Numbers of transactions, as we said before, the Genesis block has only one transaction that is the Coinbase transaction and that's it. It doesn't have any more transactions. Then we have the difficulty, then we have the Merkel root. The Merkel root is a hash of all the, of all the transactions that are included in the block. Okay, we're going to continue learning what a Merkel root is and a Merkel tree is in this channel as well. We have the version, bits, weight, size, and the nonce, as I said before, transaction volumes. And here we can analyze that it says 50 Bitcoin as a block reward. Nowadays it's 6.25. Uh, at that time was 50 Bitcoin. Those were the first Bitcoin that were introduced uh in the in the system all right and here we have this is the header of the block usually and here we have normally all the transactions that are included in a block but as we said before again in the genesis block we only had one transaction which is the coinbase transaction and here we, we can analyze that we have 50 bitcoin we're also going to continue analyzing the inputs and outputs and how to identify all this information in the transactions in a block as well in the following videos okay and here i wanted to show you this is um the twitter account from hal fine and this is january 11 2009 when hal fine um tweeted that he was running bitcoin he was the first one after satoshi to run the bitcoin software um amazing 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 so let's keep on celebrating this amazing day in bitcoin and i hope this video brought you a lot of value if it was so uh, i ask you to share it with someone in the in the ecosystem give it a thumbs up leave me your comments below and yeah everyone is talking about the news everyone is talking about the price of bitcoin we are currently at 33,000 approximately uh we're waiting for a correction uh, let's see when the correction is going to come. Usually the market behaves uh, when people expect it the least. Remember that. That is a message that all the best traders in the world keep on communicating. So the correction may come when we are expecting it the least. All right. In our next videos, we're going to continue analyzing the news, the price, and more education for you all. My name is Catalina. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao. Gracias.